this is John Lindsay with the All Cued Up Competition Steak and Barbecue Team, also co-host of Arkissippi Smoke Live. And we're actually here in the Arkissippi Studios today that we've just now built, trying to get ready for our YouTube channel to get up. And we're getting ready for steak competition tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's 4th of July, so me and Mr. Hottie Toddy himself, Ronald Burns, are gonna be going down to Cushman, Arkansas competing against 40 of some of the best teams in the nation and we're really going to try to do a good job. We'll be going live down there tomorrow. Fourth of July is going to be a fun time. Today we're here around the house. I'm having to work just a little bit but at the same time I'm trying to do a little cooking. And so what we like to do when we're home, we try to make things as practical as possible. And so today we're cooking some pork chops and I want to share with you a few things about what we do when we try to get ready for some pork chops uh, when we put them on the grill. Now I do want to tell you I'm always cooking on a hasty bake nine out of ten times. I've got my hasty bake legacy fired up out there right now. I've got the stainless steel model. It does an excellent job. Anything I want it to do, that grill smoke slash smoker can do it all. And so we're excited. But if you have a pellet grill, Weber grill, anything else you got, you can do the same thing. We'll show you a little bit about that after a while when we put them on, maybe some finished product. But what we want to talk to you today was about some of the prep work that goes behind. Now one of the worst things a person can do is go to the grocery store, pay great money for a piece of meat, and when you bring it in, just take it out of the package and throw it on the grill. Normally don't work good that way. There's gotta be a little bit of preparation for it. Now if you'll take a look right here, I've already got a bag of pork chops that's pretty much ready, that's been tenderized. And I wanna show you a little bit about our tenderization method uh, first. These are good looking pork chops. These just come from Walmart. And of course, when you get them, they're gonna be falling apart a little bit, that's fine. Now, I've got two pieces of equipment that I use religiously in the steak trailer. One is a Havilon knife. I'm gonna be quite honest with you, we just quit dealing with any, pretty much all the other knives. That Havilon's got a razor blade there on it. We love that. And also, the little Victorian ox. Now that's a paring knife, but we use it to do some quick trimming on steaks and everything else. We exclusively use Havilon and Victorinox knives. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna trim up this just a little bit and take some, actually I'm gonna get my Havilon in here. And we're gonna take just a little bit of that fat off of there so it just don't burn, try to get it kind of squared up the best we can. We got some here, maybe take just a little bit of that off and we don't wanna to take too much, but if there's anything just hanging on, we wanna just kind of trim that up just a little bit. So there's those two chops. Of course, I've got a bunch over here. And what we want to show you is just how kind of we tenderize these. If we don't use a fork, now on a steak, I use a fork in competition. But with around the house, with some of these things like this, I don't want to quite tenderize them that same way with that same method. I just use a pick. And there's a, a method to it. A lot of people just bring it in and out. That doesn't do you very much good. But I'm taking this pick and if you watch, I'm running this pick in sideways. And I know you've been to the grocery store and saw the meat manager take cutlets and run them through a, I guess a tenderizer is what it would be called. It has a lot of fine teeth on it. And so that's kind of what this mimics. Now, if you take a jacquard and you pound it out, well, you're mashing it flat. We don't want to mash it flat. We want to still have some body, still have some consistency. And so we take these tines, we're running them completely through. And if you'll watch me just kind of gather that up at a 45 degree angle, that's kind of the way we tenderize our pork chops. And then that one's ready to go and put right in the bag. One more here, we'll show you one more time. If you got the bone side here, we're going to kind of go in toward the bone. This is several muscles here on this chop this muscle here will be tend to be just a little bit tougher. So what we're doing, we're just simply trying to get it a little bit tender. If you're gonna pay good money for what you're cooking, just as well as to go ahead and get it right, this is gonna be kind of tough here, so you might wanna take a little bit of extra time. My favorite part to eat is right here. It's kind of up against the bone. As you see there, there's your piece of bone. We'll take that and throw it away. Just finger, finish tenderizing just a little bit. It's 
looking good. We love pork chops. Now we eat steak so much. Man, when you're cooking on the State Cook-Off Association circuit like we do and you're cooking every weekend, you're practicing once or twice through the week and then you're going out there and cooking your practice steaks and everything. I'm gonna be quite honest with you, you get tired of steak. So t sometimes you just want a good pork chop. Well, that's what these are going to be. And so what we're gonna do here with this, let me just dispose of some of this real quick. Uh, I've got a couple of things that we wanna be working with. Of course, I've got them in a bag. We're gonna marinate these. And my marinade consists of several things. Of course, we're gonna incorporate the all queued up steak shake right in the middle of it. This goes great for brisket mops and wraps, wrapping your ribs, and especially making marinades. The salt, pepper, garlic, and onion balance is just second to none. So we're gonna use that in just a minute. Matter of fact, we're gonna actually give you, first of all, this is about two thirds cup of olive oil. And I wanna show you about this olive oil in just a second. This is the uh, Robust Olive, come from Mark Lambert Sweet Swine of Mine Distributing. We were over there cooking a competition last weekend. I picked up some of these olive oils. This is infused with black peppercorn. It's really a great olive oil, and so uh, that gives you a little added flavor and added depth to this marinade. Also, that right there is an eighth of a cup of white vinegar. Now, what that vinegar is going to do is going to help you go ahead and break some of the uh, tissue down with the acidity in, in that. Also, got you about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Gonna go right in the marinade. We're going to give you about a uh, three tablespoons of Moore's marinade. Add that to it. And then there's two tablespoons, all queued up steak shake. That's when the magic happens. We're gonna whisk it all good and together. And this is gonna make a really good marinade. We love it. And this will help break down your pork chops. Now we use this on chicken. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a secret. It can be used on steak. It's really, really good. It's gonna help break this down. It needs to sit in here an hour before it goes anywhere else. And before I put it on the grill, we'll kind of pat it dry just a little bit with some of this. And then we're gonna season those chops with the all queued up steak shake. Now today, I'm not looking for a barbecue chop. I just want a good old fashioned grilled pork chop that's savory. We're not gonna put any sauce on it, anything like that. We're going with steak shake. That'll get the job done. You put that tied in along with a little bit of hotty toddy climax, man, it puts you over the top. But anyway, today we're just gonna use that and I think it's gonna be a good job. So we're gonna take this, just simply pour right in on top of all of our pork chops. Of course, they come out with these new bags that I really like that sit flat. We're gonna squeeze the air out of it. And then we're gonna just kinda of let these things marinate, get all that goodness in there. This is gonna go in the refrigerator here in just a few minutes after we work it around a little bit. In about 30 minutes, we're gonna go in there and just flip her over just like that. Come bring them out, pat them off, season them with a steak shake, get them on a Hasty Bake Legacy. And when we do that, we'll show you a little bit about what we're gonna do out there here in a few minutes. But we wanted you to see, we don't always cook steak. This recipe, you'll really enjoy it. So anyway, I'm John Lindsay. We're in the Arkissippi Smoke Live Studios. First video out of the studio today. We wanted to shoot, check the lighting, check everything, and tell everybody happy 4th of July. We'll show you what we do on these in just a little bit. It's gonna be a great bite. We'll catch you in a few minutes.